Guess who's back? Yes! I am the chief <laughs> NFT strategist. Gang, gang in the building. Hello, everyone. Happy Monday. I haven't been on here in a while. I told y'all last time I had family in town, so that's where my focus has been the last couple of days. Uh, but I've been working, working hard. Uh, some big announcements coming soon. Uh, our relaunch is coming. I'll actually give you the date and the location of that soon. And we're down to the final stages of uh, just the new development, the redesign. It's crazy how this process has been. It's been almost three years of retooling, retweaking, building, creating, innovating. And pretty soon the world will see uh, the finished product. Well, it's not finished because it's always a work in progress. Uh, we got to monitor feedback, see what people like, what they don't like. And we got to fix things and make it better and perfect it. And that's what we're really focused on. So I'm excited. Um, and um, I hope you'll be excited too. I ultimately believe that uh, we are creating a concept that's going to revolutionize the bar and rest of our industry. It's going to make the experience better for all. Uh, there's a lot of feedback, a lot of testing for years, uh, putting the concept out there, failing a lot. Uh, but I'm excited. I'm ready. But uh, yeah, I won't be for be. I won't be before you long today. I'm just going to share a couple of things. And before I do that, let me do this. What's up, what's up, what's up? Yes, go out and mint you a bar game NFT. We're cheap right now. Uh, ETH has come down. It's gone back up. It's back down. It's still well off the highs. I believe the highs were about 4,600. I think it's around 25 to 2,600 right now. I think you can mint your bar game NFT for about 200 bucks. Uh, we have utilities galore. You just saw the video. Um, just stay tuned. I know there's a lot of projects that came out, sold out in minutes. Uh, but we're creating a concept that's going to provide real value in the real world for a very long time. I truly believe we're our long-term investment. Uh, I'm not a financial advisor or an expert. I'm just sharing my opinion. And my opinion is the bargain is going to be the thing to have. Go and mention your bargain NFT. Uh, we would love your support. So I wanted to show you this while we're talking about NFTs. Um, I read this article on yesterday and I was like, wow. Um, the link is in the description. This is an article from uh, Vice, vice.com. It's called The NFT Ecosystem is a Complete Disaster. Top, top marketplaces facilitate epic amounts of theft and watch trading scams are rampant and the cringe is unbearable. Can it last? So uh, you can read it for yourself, but I'm just going to highlight some of the points that, I, you know, the major takeaways for me. Uh, so this part says take open, see the most popular. Marketplace for NFTs last week, OpenSea suddenly limit the number of times users can mint NFTs for free on this platform because over 80% that were created with the tool were plagiarized works, fake collections, and spam. Let me just tell you, every day, and the bargain NFT is still a fairly new concept. Uh, we haven't, you know, received no uh, recognition on um, a national stage yet. But still, every day we have to report a fake page. Basically, what people do, they go to our Twitter, our Instagram, they take our pictures, and they create a collection. And I'm just like, how? I mean, literally, since, you know, we've probably been in existence for about a month, um, I would probably guess that it's been about 50 pages, 50 plus pages that we've had to have deleted. Um, and it's been on OpenSea. So it's just, it's amazing to me how these concepts make so much money and so unorganized and, and don't have uh, more protect protections in place for uh, people like myself and other collection owners and 
um, artists. So OpenSea's buzzy as competitor looks rare is fraught with another serious problem, wash trading, a normally illegal type of market manipulation that inflates trade volume and value by buying and selling an asset to oneself and among an organized group. They're basically talking about projects. They buy up their project. They set the price. I mean, it's it's pretty intense uh, what goes on uh, behind the scenes. Uh, but that's what they're talking about. Looks for financially rewards users for their trading volume, which predictably led to people gaming the system. Just this week, it surpassed OpenSea and trade volumes thanks to a crypto analyst firm, Crypto Slam, estimated to be $8.3 billion worth of wash trading, approximately 87% of its total trading volume since launching on January 10th. So these concepts are new. They're making so much money and it's almost like there's no regulation. It's they could get away with a lot. I guess that's what makes crypto in that world so fascinating to people. But when you're getting so many people scammed, uh, so many people losing money, at some point things got to change or things got to improve. Uh, the froth of enthusiasm combined with the market's weak infrastructure. Most projects run from Discord. And I talked a little bit about Discord. A chat platform for video games has also led to a spectacular amount of scams and hacks targeting investors. NFTs are regularly used to raise money for dubious projects that end in spectacular failures or in a southern rug pool where anonymous founders make off with everyone's money. The Evolved 8 NFT project raised millions to help develop a fighting game and cover project-related expenses only for the founding developer, Evil 8, to disappear with $2.7 million. Uh, Big Daddy 8 Club's creators stole $1.3 million worth of tokens on Solana, Blockverse, um, and unofficial uh, Minecraft NFT project sold out 10,000 NFTs in a few minutes before its creator disappears with over 1.2 million worth of tokens. At some point, uh, this has to, has to, has to change because uh, there are a lot of people that don't have the money like that, that are putting their money into NFT projects and without, like I said, a roadmap, a business plan. And at the end of the day, that's not fair uh, that these people are making this amount of money and then can just disappear with no accountability or no repercussions. So at some point, I hope that um, things change. So as it's there, NFTs are useful primarily for pursuing enclosure. The explicit goal here is to turn every inch of our physical world and any digital world into a place where nearly every experience and thing is quantified, commodified, and privatized. As a secondary purpose, NFTs currently facilitate a great deal of fraud, spam, theft, plagiarism, and also some retail investors to join in on the gambling typically reserved for the sludge that sits uh, atop the pool of investors as a tertiary purpose. I don't know if I said that word right, but uh, they confer some benefits to some creators who are lucky, wealthy, or cynical enough to take advantage of them. Right now, their value is locked up in the dark vision of the future that believers insist will not only inevitably exist, but will turn out much better than this one. Most of these grand visions will never come to pass. And yet, if you watch the ridiculous exchange between Paris Hilton and Jimmy Fallon as they showed off their JPEGs on TV and muttered, what the fuck is this, to yourself, then you must realize by now that the allure of dizzying profit, profits far sees any shame or scorn cast their way, at least until the profits stop coming. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of critics and skeptics that... Um, are, are about crypto and NFTs. Um, I'm I'm definitely not one of those, as you know. Uh, but I understand where the frustration comes in. Uh, I just think that NFTs are an amazing concept, uh, and I think as we once again trim the fat, um, get the hype uh, machine to die down, I think that we'll see the real values that NFTs can create. Um, I think that if you can create real world value to the NFTs, I think that it's an amazing, amazing concept and it's only going to make people's experiences uh, that much better. But anytime you're creating something great, there are going to be some bad guys. There are going to be some bad situations. So hopefully there's something that is created, whether it's in the OpenSea platform, the Looks Rare platform, where they can eliminate as much as they can uh, the, the, the fraud and the scams that will be great for everyone involved.
All right, really quick before I go, I want to share something with you. So a couple of years ago, I wrote this article. Someone asked me recently, I was interviewing someone. They said, what is your superpower? And they kind of caught me off guard because I was interviewing them, but in turn, they were interviewing me. Uh, but I thought about it. And uh, one of the things I said is I have an ability to know what's going on uh, with people um, just by how they interact on a video call, how they report their, uh, the items that they report on the team, or just kind of um, how their habits of doing their work change. And because of that, that's how I'm able to run a team remotely. So a few stats on me. I've been running a pretty uh, successful business for a very long time now. I, I have lived in other states. I have run it uh, sitting at a bar. I have run it sitting on an island. And um, and the crazy thing about it is that's that was always my objective when I started running businesses. It was always to be in a situation where I can travel the world, I can spend time with my family, and I can still make money running the business. And so um, I think it's a skill to it. Um, it's been a lot of studying. It's a lot of trial and error. It's a lot of failures. Um, it's a lot of setting expectations because especially when so many people do uh, things one way and you do it differently, uh, you got to be able to deal with the criticism that comes your way. So. Um, Definitely, I'll put the link in the description of this article I wrote a few years ago, but the title was How to Lead While Running a Business Remotely. Um, I just talk about uh, managing people is one of the hardest things to do when running the business. The crazy part is it's what I enjoy the most despite the challenges of doing it remotely. Take the time to mimic everything that you do well and document it. So uh, if you are... Uh, you know, you actually every day come in and make 10 phone calls and then you log it in a spreadsheet and then you um, uh, do follow up emails and then you uh, put the numbers in uh, uh, QuickBooks or something like that. Document your step, steps. Uh, so that's one I would definitely document everything you do. And then the second part of that is you create processes um, in specific areas. So. Obviously, when you run a business, you have the billing accounts receivable, you have the marketing, you have the um, the, the the payroll, you have the um, uh, the hiring, you have the recruiting. There's a bunch of different um, areas, and depending on your business, some change, some are consistent, and so each um, area has um, a process aligned to it. So, for example, marketing. Um, a process can be how to handle an inquiry call. The second process can be how to uh, follow up with an inquirer who may not be ready to make a decision yet. The third may be how to actually go out and do a sales visit. So each one of these things is a process. So you have to actually document a step-by-step -step how to do this, right? So for each area within your business. So document what you do, create like a system of processes that corresponds to each uh, activity within your business. And then um, you got to have a hiring philosophy. Uh, make sure that the person fits within your culture, fits within the parameters of how you do things as a team and as a company. And then you just got to kind of, you know, make it easy, simplify it for them when they're starting. And then uh, each week, uh, depending on the business that you're in and how involved you are, set up weekly meetings where people report uh, that activity that they work on. And then you hear what they're talking about. And from there, you share what you're doing. And at that point, now you're in a situation where the business is running with or without you being involved. Um, and you can uh, get feedback, know what's going on, whether they're in your face or you're remote. Part of the reasons why I uh, am so big on running a business remotely is because those things that I talk about, it frees me up to travel the world. It frees me up to spend time with my family. It frees me up to do more of the things I love. I mean, you know, I, you know sometimes I go back and forth. I miss being in the office, but I work a lot from home. Um, you know, a lot of time I'm working in my pajamas or I'm working in my I'm good t-shirt, which you could pick up at BBT Apparel uh, and it's in the description. Um, so 
it's, it's, you know, I'm very, very fortunate to be in, in control of a lot of my work activities. And if you learn how to uh, build a business and run it remotely, you just create more opportunities for you be, to be in better control of your time and for you to do more things that you love. If you want something, you have to go after it. And uh, I just want to end with these encouraging words. And I hope uh, it resonates with you. If you don't go after what you want, it's hard to complain. Well, you can complain, but that doesn't mean you're going to get what should be yours. Time will pass you by, so you need to live life on your own terms. Have you ever wanted something so bad, but too afraid to go after it due to fear? Are you taking the risk to allow yourself to live life to your full potential? As cliche as it may sound, everything you want in life can be yours, but you must decide that you're worthy and make every effort to bring it to your reality. Well, it's time to the gym because it's no days off. We need to believe that something better is coming because without faith, what are we? We must make sure that we value our health before the pain comes. The most precious gift is our mind, so we must feed it daily and often. And then there's financial freedom and good support systems. When we have those, we're less stressed, have more peace of mind, and in better control of our life. It is critical that we stop being scared of what can go wrong, get excited about what can go right, and then go get it. Smile for a thumbnail. Nasty. So yes, y'all, I appreciate you taking this journey today with me. It feels good to be back. Uh, I definitely will be back on the schedule of doing shows daily. Uh, this was supposed to be a really quick show, but I see I actually went 20 minutes or something like that. Uh, so I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I got a lot to say out of my mouth, and I hope that uh, it helped you. Please like, subscribe, leave a comment, push that notification. Um, this surely helps. But what helps the most is definitely leaving a comment. Let me know how. I can make the show better. Um, and if you got some specific you want me to address, uh, you can hit me on Twitter or you can leave a comment and I will address it on an upcoming show. So I appreciate you. Thank you. And I am out. Peace.